All right, ever since Apple let us know that Logic Pro is coming to the iPad, a lot of you guys have been a little hyped about it. And uh, some of you guys are now thinking about switching over to get an iPad to uh, you know record and do your production in. So I'm gonna show you guys my iPad setup to help you guys get the best sound that you can get on your iPad. Bolo! Now, what I'm gonna show you today is my personal setup. Your setup can change, but I'm just gonna show you some things that you're gonna need to get the best sound out of your iPad so you can make some really decent tracks and some really decent recordings out of your iPad so you won't seem like an amateur. Now, if you're just using this on the run, you can easily go out and just get you a little small, little five, six dollar dongle, um, a USB-C dongle from off of Amazon and just plug in your headphones into that and you can just make your tracks and stuff like that as well. But if you're trying to go a little bit further, I'm gonna show you guys the tools that I use. First things first, you're gonna need an iPad. My iPad is the 2020 iPad that came out. It is not the M1 iPad. It does have a A12 or A13 chip. I can't remember which chip is in there, but I do have one of those A chips in there and uh, it works perfectly fine for me. I don't need to upgrade it no time soon, but it seems like every time I say that I always upgrade it. But as of right now, I don't need to upgrade it and I'm not using Final Cut Pro on my iPad. so. I don't think I need the M1 yet, even though I probably might get an M1 iPad now that I think about it, but we'll see. But I have the 11 inch model and it does perfectly fine. I have a nice little protective case over it and it works great. So that's the first thing you're gonna need to start your setup is you need an iPad. The second thing you're gonna need is a dongle of some sorts. You're gonna need a USB-C dongle for this to work. Okay, now if you have an older iPad, you can use the lightning dongle, which I've had videos that showed you guys how to hook this up before, but some of you guys are not gonna go back to those older videos. But if you do wanna see that, I do have videos where I make tons of tracks on my iPad and I have videos showing my original setup and then now this newer setup and I guess I'm gonna show you this setup again today. But yes, you're gonna need a dongle, and my dongle that I have is a dongle that I picked up off of Amazon. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but you know how Amazon is. It could be the same product and have 10 different names. You can plug up to three USB 3 devices to it, which is actually kind of dope. It has an SD card slot and a TF card slot. It has an HDMI monitor out on it as well, and it has a USB-C plug on here to where you can plug it in and it'll keep everything charged up and ready to go. So the next thing you'll need is a interface. Now it doesn't matter what interface you use as long as it's class compliant. Now the interface that I like to use is the Audient ID14 interface. I really like how this interface sounds. I like the preamps on it and it is very dope for my setup. I like how it has the gain knobs on the front it has the 48 volt power for both of the microphone inputs. It has line inputs as well. It has a USB-C connection, which I actually use the USB-C to USB connection on here. It has two stereo outputs on here as well. It has a guitar input and it has a headphone jack that supports the quarter inch cables and it has the small stereo 1 8 cable input as well. And if you wanna expand this to even more stuff, it has an optical input as well. And last but not least, this is definitely optional. You can get you a MIDI keyboard. Now the MIDI keyboard I'm using is the Akai MPK Mini. It is very dope. I love the look, you know, it got the black on black look and it has everything I need and it fits right in my bag. It doesn't take up any space. So it's definitely perfect for traveling. So this is just a standard USB MIDI keyboard. All you gotta do is plug it into the dongle and the iPad will recognize it and you can just get to work. And oh, before I forget, there is some optional stuff that you can get as well. I actually have a stand that holds my iPad. It is a Lama Call, Lama Call stand that you can get off of Amazon. It was only like 14, 15 bucks at the time. And also you can get yourself a mouse. Yeah. I know some of y'all don't like this mouse right here, but uh, you know. It's a really good mouse. But you can get a mouse that hooks into the dongle as well, and that way you'll have more control instead of just pressing and tapping all over the screen. So yeah, you can get those as well. Now, before you guys go out and pull out your old iPads, I wanna tell you this. If you have an older iPad, maybe like a 2018 model or below, 
make sure you get some sort of a dongle that supports a power supply because those older iPads will not be able to power all this stuff together. Now, the newer iPads, I will say maybe like the 2019 or the 2020 model, somewhere around there, if you get one of those models, they will be able to power everything via USB-C. Anything else? I, I don't know. You know, you just gotta kind of figure it out on your own. But they have pretty much all of the products that you can get on Amazon, okay? So just go on to Amazon, do some YouTube video searches, go to my older videos where I make a lot of beats on my iPad stuff, and you guys will see my ultimate setup that I used to use before. Now, for everybody who's asking, is there plugins and stuff like that on the iPad? Yes, there is a ton of plugins that you can use on the iPad. They have so many different programs and everything on the iPad. They have a ton of virtual instruments and they have a ton of audio effects that you can use on the iPad. So don't worry about it. You're still gonna get a good sound. There's a ton of great companies that have plugins for the iPad that is dirt cheap. And as some of you guys know, one of my favorite programs is Beatmaker 3. It is a great program. It has an NPC style workflow and it has a awesome sampler in it and it has a linear arranger so you can arrange your tracks and you can do just about everything in it. You can record songs in it and it is very dope. There's a whole bunch of other stuff like Cubase on here. They have Loopy Pro, they have a lot of good stuff, but this is just my personal choice of making beats on the iPad and the program is only like 30 bucks. And for 30 bucks, you can really make some dope stuff like I did the other day on the plane. Check this out. So there it is, my ultimate setup for the iPad Pro. You don't have to do it this way, but if you want to get a very good sound, I would kind of recommend you going this route. Now you can switch out the uh, audio interface, you can switch out the MIDI keyboard, the dongle, all that stuff like that. If you really want to go in, you can actually go even further with this, but just for me, I think that this is all I pretty much need to get the sound that I want. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.